Good morning. Hello. Today is Monday, August the 5th, and this is the complaint committee meeting. We are starting at 912, and I apologize for the delay. I will turn it over to our legal counsel, uh, Ms. Pamela Spicer, so that we can start on the legal report on your iPads, and we do have a quorum in order to proceed. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, the legal report was provided to you on your iPad, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, there was nothing that I needed to note, it, note on this particular legal report. I had questions later on for the represented cases, but before that, page 17, cases 54 and 55, I just wanted to clarify, these are shops that don't have licenses, but the folks working there do you have licenses? Is that why the penalty is only a hundred dollars? On it's page seventeen, cases mm -hmm. fifty four and fifty five. On fifty four, um, that is the individual owner manager. So the individual has a license, but the shop is not licensed. Is that what I'm? Yes, the shop does not have a license. Um, so, wait a minute. Let me look at that for a second. Shop has a license. Well, I was just curious because there are two of them, and clearly, if there's unlicensed activity, it's a thousand dollar fine. But I guess it's li licensed barbers working in an unlicensed shop. No, I'm wondering if it's an expired license. Let me check on those. I'm glad you called that because um, the shop has a license on 55. 54 um, is the owner manager, um, and it's not unlicensed activity. But let me look at the complaints and okay. come back to no you problem. on the full board meeting. I'm glad you called that. Um, I'm assuming it's an expired license, and I just left out the word expired, but I'll okay. double check on it. That makes sense. Thank you. Did you, did you have questions on the represents? I didn't know if you were going to be addressing those or not. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood. I can. Okay, but I'll wait if there are more questions. Okay. Thank you. And I have my laptop uh, with me today since I'll be down here for the entire <laughs> meeting. Um, so I'll check and then address <clears throat> it on the full board meeting and make the appropriate change on 54 and 55. That's probably my error. Thank you. Ma'am, I was looking at uh, page 13 and case 43, microblading. Uh, I realize that's not under our board, but uh, does that get referred out to the, uh, what is that, the medical board that looks at that? Or the we can make a referral. I would need to add that to the recommendation if if we prefer. That was 43, correct? Yes. So that doesn't fall, microblading does not fall under our list of services. So we don't, we don't maintain that or monitor that. Another board would? Correct. Okay. If I could add to that, if you recall, I think maybe even close to a couple of years ago, we started the conversations. Oh, yeah. Ms. Sappenfield was kind enough to share a lot of the experience. Uh, for a long time, we couldn't give an answer because we didn't really know where it fell. It was relatively a new item. So we have on our board's website the Attorney General's decision on that. And, and we still do get calls a lot fewer than two years ago because most of our estheticians have realized that this is closer to the tattoo piece that again isn't regulated by us and so that's how we refer individuals that are trying to open a shop and do it as well as um, take a certification and pay a lot of money to do it it would fall under that board gotcha thank you yes thank you the only one that I had
I do have the update on 54 and 55. It is an expired shop. License? Correct. Okay. The shop license. Shop expired. license. Okay. So we'll make those edits. Just so everyone's clear on 54 and 55, at the time of the inspection, um, you know, sometimes when you look at the history where it says first license obtained, license expiration, complaint history, obviously there are times they've renewed by the time it gets to me or by the time it gets to you all. Um, but at the time of inspection, um, this license was expired. And usually I say that, but on this one, um, obviously I left out the wording of expired, but the civil penalty of $100 is correct. It's expired shop license. For both of them. 54 is the owner. Oh, okay. And 55 is the, sh is the shop. Is the shop. Thank you. But I will make the change in the summary just so uh, the report's clear that it is for an expired license. Do you all have questions on the represents? I reread them and I think I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for your detail. Have anything else? Any other questions for Pam? No? <coughs> Smooth. Nope. Thank I you. I think that's going to be all. Okay. Then we will wrap up the full reciproc the reciprocity committee meeting will start at 930. We'll pause for about 10 minutes. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Frank, old buddy, keeps it. Becky, can we steal you? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are back on the record. This is the Reciprocity Committee meeting, and we are starting right at about 9:32. Um, I'll let everyone get their iPads going and uh, get us started. If you give me a minute. And we have Ms. Becky Russell joining us for the committee. I know we are all going to thank her again for being part of this today. This is mostly because uh, we've got four applicants, so it's not a big uh, group of reciprocal requests. But at the end, we want to have a minute to look at what we discussed at the last meeting, which is the possibility of um, reconsidering reciprocity, what we, can, what we call substantially meets. Is there anything else that we can do? and then present and discuss it again at the end of the full meeting. So it's not like we have to come to something final, but it'll give us a chance to talk about it. Um, you have first on your iPads, Ms. Joanne Bodman. This is a reciprocity application for a cosmetology license from California. The certification shows an initial licensure in 2004 with 1,250 hours and no practical exam. Ms. Bodman could not provide a transcript of, or proof of work experience. Uh, the school that she listed on her application is on page two of the presentation, and it is not one of the schools currently under the California review of schools with um, possible disciplinary situations or um, concerns that California has with licenses. So um, I will leave this up to the board's discretion. My recommendation would be that since she's had a license since 04, we approve her for reciprocity, but she does not have a transcript or at this point has not been able to give us proof of work experience. <clears throat> Uh, 
her request just for an uh, esthetician? Uh, no, she is requesting uh, cosmetology. And she had listed on her application that she did the um, 1,500 hours. Give me a minute. Make sure that I've got the right one. Odeman? Yeah, she's an esthetician. It is esthetician. You're right. I apologize. It's esthetician out of California, and they have the 600 hours instead of the 750. Uh, her certification shows that she was licensed in 2004 and is currently active. Um, but we don't have the five years work experience uh, to prove. Now she's uh, she explains situation that she's had with um, her documents and that she's been licensed so long. But I don't know if the board wants to wait to obtain something else from her or go ahead and approve her, given that she's only missing the 150. That would be my recommendation. But she has no work experience. None that she's been able to turn in. On the bottom of page uh, three, is it six? I talked with you on the 15th regarding uh, you looked at my files and said that everything was okay. Prior employment and certifications. I didn't work the last five years in the field of aesthetics. So she would have possibly have worked before, but not the prior years. last year that she worked did she say it doesn't you're looking at all yeah, the communication we've yeah. had with her um, because we won't see each other again until October now these these go back a bit the last time that we've communicated with her were was in May we just didn't get it all in uh, and we had to pull the California cert the original California certificate had not gotten to us yet we can definitely ask her for more um, but the, I wouldn't be able to approve her between now and October, even if we got it, because it wouldn't be the last five. California has the two exams, so that's not the problem. Um, the problem is, w one, the transcript from the school, um, but then the 150 hours. So in her case, she's been licensed more than the 10 years, which is sometimes what we take into account. What year was her uh, initial license? 2004. Oh, January was, of 2004. <clears throat> her initial license. Mm -hmm. Like she at least needs to take one of the te the Tennessee license part of it. Practical. Practical. Yeah. No, the. Uh, yeah. Remember with the theory, if we have someone take the theory, they automatically are expected to take the practical. We don't hear from them. When PSI gets the theory, it opens the practical <clears throat> up. That's not to say that we can't do it, but it would normally break that pattern. Um, so often we've, we've gone with the practical. It's whichever one or both if you, if you decide. I mean, she's got the years of work, but that's all we've got. She hadn't got any practical work experience in five years. I mean, if she was working, she'd have something for that. Uh, um, Changed a lot in the last five years. I make the motion that she test both exams. Yes. We have a motion uh, to uh, submit this candidate for both tests. Any? Uh, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have an application for reciprocity of a cosmetology license from New York for Rostin uh, Cherchilli. The certification shows an initial licensure in July of 2012 with 100 hours uh, or the equivalent experience. Both exams would have been required in uh, New York at that time, but the certificate doesn't reflect the actual dates. Mr. Churchelli has provided documentation from production companies in Paris, France, going back to 2012, as well as tax, tax records, translated documents, and proof of work as hair professional <coughs> for a studio in New York. Uh, the documents are all there before you. I would recommend that we approve him for reciprocity.
Mr. Chelly. Okay. We had discussed the possibility of him coming in. He's got a job that he's waiting on for this uh, today. So I knew that if they couldn't come or he could not, he was going to be watching the video. <clears throat> In Paris, he completed 2,400 hours. He, he has more than enough if we're looking at his international hours. He has plenty of time working in New York. He has letters of recommendation from New York and everywhere else. Um, like the motion to approve. We, second. We have a motion and a second to approve. <coughs> Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have an application for reciprocity of a cosmetology license from Oregon for Ashton Cox. The certification from Oregon is for a hair design license. Um, Oregon does have also a um, at some point has had a cosmetology license. Uh, this particular uh, hair design license was issued in June of 2019. Um, and also, if you look on our documents, page 25 has the cosmetology, but also on page 26, uh, this individual also has an esthetician license. Uh, both go back to 2019, and both were by examination. Uh, because the Oregon license for the hair design, uh, which is what they're applying for, is full cosmetology, doesn't cover all of the aspects, I would recommend that the applicant take the Tennessee exams. And the licenses are from t just a few months ago. Make the motion that he takes both exams. No second. Motion and a second to take both exams. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Our last applicant is a reciprocity application for a cosmetology license from Pennsylvania for Damaris Magruder. The certification shows an initial licensure of October 1981 with 1,250 hours and no practical exam. Ms. Magruder provided an explanation of the salon that she owned, having needed dozens of surgeries and unable to provide actual proof of work experience. I would recommend that we approve her for reciprocity given the extensive years of licensure. The practical exam is one of the things that we, we decided that if they had more than 10 years of licensure, we would be able to waive. So in this case, um, she has the 10 years. And the 1,500 hours. So. And, and, and well, it's 1,250 hours, so a little bit short on the hours. Percentage-wise, not, not a lot, but Pennsylvania is at 1,250. Um, she typed in 1,500 okay. on her application. Okay, we, we asked for the transcript because then we would have been at a different place. She does not have the transcript. Um, we've got the letter on page, email communications on page 33 regarding the surgeries and things that she's had. So we don't have proof of work experience, but she's also been teaching and associated with various companies. Make a motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And, and that concludes the actual reciprocal applicants that we had. I'd expected to have five, but one got resolved. So. We've got about 15 minutes before the full meeting starts. Um, I know that I emailed. I don't know if everybody had a chance to review the two recommended documents for reciprocal. They are on your iPads under the full presentation. If you'd like me to give you the page number and we want to open them to start those conversations. Um, the, the first analysis uh, was presented, and that's why Ms. Russell is joining us, by Becky. She did a lot of research on where we line up with other states for us to look at and discuss. And then Ms. Sappenfield also sent us a document on um, the aesthetics piece and how we could review it. So I will turn it over to you all so we can at least start this and kind of uh, know where we want to head with the full board. What pages? 
on the iPads, it is on page 191 under presentation. So I can kind of, and I, I will turn it over to, to Ms. Russell to fill in, but I think the approach that in the analysis she did, she was looking at considering those states that come within 80% of what Tennessee has, and that covers the vast majority of states. So that if an individual, for example, in Alabama has a um, license just issued yesterday for 1,500 hours, we would be able to obviously approve them right now because they're at 1,500, so they've got the exact same number as we do. But if you look at New Jersey on the bottom of page 91 with 1,200 hours, that's still within that 80% that, that would be uh, related to our license. And in New Jersey's case, they, I believe, do both exams. And so that's kind of uh, the path. She has highlighted in red those that are less than the 1,000, the, than the 80%, such as New York with 1,000 hours. Um, so, so the thought would be to have some type of a path to um, substantially meeting it, although not meeting it exactly and not having the last five years and, and uh, being able to license them um, and impose fewer barriers, if you will. So, Ms. Russell, am I missing something or leaving anything out? <clears throat> Like if we're going to um, accept eighty percent of what we require, that we might need to take a look at what what our requirements are. If that's all they need, it's eighty percent of what we're doing. Well, remember that your reciprocal applicants are testing as well, right? And they've already been working um, in the field. So I think that's the piece. If if they're working and supporting their families for one, two, three, four, five years, sending them back to school in, in some cases is, is a hardship. Um, the, the statute dictates the number of hours, so that would be a law change. That wouldn't be at our discretion. But these are individuals that are, aren't going to school or, wait, or beginning. They've been working. So that's, that's the fine point. And is 80% is then not enough? And we stick with... But we're just accepting the hours so they can test. Right. No, her proposal, if you look at it, is if they are 80% close to ours and have a license with the exams and a license, so they've been working, then to go ahead and reciprocate and allow them to get a license in Tennessee. Working for the five years? Work Without experience. the working for five years, if they're within the 80%. That's already in place. We already have that. We're not looking to make the same thing yeah. we do. Okay. If we are reviewing the process and considering anything new, it is for people moving more and more, which is what we're seeing, um, with, a year, with one to four years. I mean, those are probably our big numbers. They, they just got it a year ago, a year and a half ago, and those are the individuals that are going back to school to then retest and so forth. Um, I would like to say that I'm just opening it for discussion. I'm not trying to force this on you. So if you're not comfortable with it, then that's something that we need to think about and vote on. My thought process in going through this is that there are only two textbook manufacturers for cosmetology and barbering in the United States, with the great exception of if a school is writing their own textbook then they've all studied out of the same material and if they are testing and passing the exams in the other states um, then it is likely that another 200 hours is not going to help 
Um, I've had a student or several students who have attended my class after you know transferring here and being asked to go back to school for 200 hours and there's really nothing I can teach them in 200 hours you know I could prepare them to take our state board exam but they really need to be prepared more to work in the field which I feel like they've already done so a lot of times it's coming in and just reviewing test testing material to make sure they can pass that test again that they haven't forgotten anything um, I'm not saying that this is, you know, exactly what we should do. It was just something to open the door for discussion. Um, and if you look, there are very few that are on this list that are going to be less than um, ours only meeting the 80%. And mm -hmm. if we were to redline those as well and say it would only be exactly 100% or more, then we've still got a large number of states that would meet that criteria as well. Counting on just the ones I see here on your list, there's five states where the cosmetology does not uh, at least equal 1,500 hours for Tennessee. And then there's 15 states where the barber hours don't meet 1,500 hours. There are definitely more in barbering as well as manicuring. Manicuring has quite a few where it doesn't meet. Um, so again, it's just open for discussion. I just, you know, I wanted you all to see what I had, I was able to see, because it's important to me to know when they're coming from another state, exactly what have they studied and how long have they spent studying that. It also, um, in the far right um, column, it tells you a little bit about their testing. Either they've been tested by the same company that we use or a different company, or also if there are any odd, um, oddities in that testing area then I've tried to make note of those where you don't have anything in the right field Which state is that this is I'm sure it's just one I've overlooked I could probably get that information we can pull it up if we have a minute I, I've got the um, 2019 version NIC actually publishes what all the states have um, every state is look is is addressing different things some have reduced hours uh, manicuring has gone through that in many states and so um, it, they change but once a year we get that update so I'll confirm what Massachusetts has they have at least the theory exam I don't know about the practical so we can see but this is something that everyone was going to go ahead and work on after the last meeting so I really was very thankful that Ms. Russell put something together to consider as we as we move forward and, and whatever the changes like she said the this is research and a discussion piece. Uh, Ms. Sappenfields is afterwards. It's mostly kind of a, a review for the aesthetics piece and, and the international. Um, and I'll make a note about Mass Massachusetts. Thank you. First of all, let me say thank you for yes, doing this. Yes, yes. I, know, I know the amount of work you put into this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I knew that in the past there there's there had been an issue with trying to require we you need to get 300 more hours that's a problem so I know uh, that we do need a solution to that problem and that <clears throat> maybe this is it but um, it just makes me question how can they be just as prepared in other states as we I don't know I'm just thinking through it, and I'm not against. I mean, I'm not against any of it. I'm just trying to think through it out loud. If my first reaction was, if they did PSI testing like we do, then that's all on the same playing field. And then Roxana told me, no, they PSI is just the company, and they can have their own questions, and it's not the same. It's like, okay, well, so much for that. <laughs> but as Ms. Becky pointed out, they're all testing for the same things we are, which is to protect the public. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, every state reviews the same things we review. We sit for a full week and go through good questions, bad questions. I mean, it's intense. And I'm sure every state, whether they use PSI or another vendor, they do the same thing. So um, it, it, they're still testing. I will say that PSI, when we're going through these questions, if we are lack so we have a pool of questions that we're pulling from. If we are lacking in one area or another, PSI has oftentimes offered us questions from other states for us to look at to see, will this work for our state? And oftentimes they are you know, great questions that we would have also um, asked for. So we might put those in to be explored for Tennessee. Now they're not 
necessarily put on the test that minute, but they are tested test questions, if that makes sense. Um, and they're tested for a couple of years before they actually join the pool. So if we're short on questions, sometimes we borrow them from other states and um, of course other states borrow ours as well. So, so one possibility of, of changing this reciprocity process is that we look at uh, states that meet 80% of the requirement on, on the education and that they have passed both exams regardless of how many years and they have some work history I guess is what we're saying then we're going to grant that we can grant them reciprocity if we change to this is that what we're saying if that's what the committee and the full board decides that would fall in line with kind of the vision of because we have so many people moving to Tennessee have posing less barriers for them they, they have a license in another state. We've stuck really closely, and I think you all have done a fantastic job with consistency. It's five years. Show us the five years. And we're just getting them to move here much faster. I mean, many of our applicants have a year, year and a half, and exactly what Ms. Russell said, I have the applicants call or show up in person because they're very frustrated with the, what am I going to learn in school? I mean, I worked for six months at a high-end shop and and I, I call two schools and you know they they even tell me what are what are we going to teach you they're prepping me for an exam I already took so I don't think you could have said it better that's what they're facing it's very, very difficult when they move here and they list like a few hours you know and they do get bored they're sitting there 200 hours or 300 hours and I bored. won't say that it's been in the recent past but um several years back I had a lady that came to join me for 250 hours I think it was 250 because she had a license from New York and had not worked for the previous four years she had spent a year as a um, missionary in another country so she came back she had like 10 years of work experience and then skipped a year as a missionary and then had to go back to school so she you know she knew just as much as you know us as instructors as far as the hair portion was concerned so it was just so difficult to see her back in school after having that much experience in the field so that was um, an unusual situation but at that point what are you teaching them you know you're basically having the having them to just review information for a, a theory test just to ensure that they can still pass that Back to your numbers, just a second. Um, out of the 15 barber or 15 states that the barbers uh, require less, uh, eight of those 15 require at least one third. Uh, so that's a thousand hours only out of a 1500 hour program. Three additional ones require fewer hours than a thousand. I don't know what the magic number is. Uh, yeah. It was just, just something that, that stuck out in my mind that, that as we do this, we want to want to make sure we're uh, maintaining the standard. And to, to piggyback on what you just said, I had a student about two weeks ago who graduated, um, completed his course, both of his tests in the high 90s. And the day he passed his final test, he was moving to Florida. He already had a job in Florida. And the only thing that prevented him from um, having to take the Florida exam and go through a lot more work there is the fact he's also military, and they gave him some consideration as military. Otherwise, he, you know, of course, he would have no work history, and then he'd have to go through a process there as well. And uh, I think on your list, Florida requires. Does it here? Twelve hundred and fifty. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. That's been the Thank case. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so he would have exceeded their hours anyway, but uh, that was helpful for him. So I'm just saying, as you know, out of all 50 states, um, when we're looking at this, we're really looking at eight states who require less than Tennessee. I'm sorry, 15 that require less than Tennessee. And uh, uh, it looks like 11 require at least a third less or more than a third less. I will say that some of these states, um, in order to get their final license, not only do they have to do these hours, but they also have a, a time that they're working with a barber in their shop. So it's kind of an apprenticeship program, but according to the hours 
you know, if, if it's saying technically the hours required, it gives this amount, but it may be this amount plus two years as an apprentice, um, which wouldn't be, you know, it's not in the notes, but I did find that some of those lower hours, and that's what's hmm. happening. 80% would be uh, about 1,200 hours on the full length programs. So if they had, if they're looking at 1,200 hours from another state um, as that magic number, then these 11 schools or these 11 states still wouldn't really fit into that they category. So they'd still have to do something. Manicure, and there's so many of them that's way <coughs> under what we are. And the manicuring, it may be that they're going to have to go back to school, especially those that are so low. Um, I just. I'm sorry. Roxana, um, now is this in consideration of still having some work uh, experience or just no? Totally up to you. Okay. Totally up to you. If, at least what I interpret it is if we, go, if, well, if we went with the 80% in the exams, they could have gotten a license yesterday. Right. Um, because if we're asking for work experience as well, then we're going to have, I mean, and again, it's going to be your decision, but then it's going to be really choppy for us to follow. Uh, but those that are low is still an improvement from where we are at. And yes, we would look at work experience for the five years. So the manicures that only did in Alaska 350 hours or 12 hours, we won't pick on that state. Uh, <laughs> aesthetics 350 hours. Yeah. Right. Um, they're low and, and right. we'd need the five years and we'd go back to that process. Mm -hmm. What we're really looking at here with, with the numbers that, that, that we're talking about right now is really defining what we are considering to be substantial experience right. uh, for, for the hours proportion of it. And if somebody still falls below that, uh, possibly still having some work experience to go along with that. Is it And I hate to interrupt us, but we probably should go ahead and just kind of fig think a way to present that to the full board, stop for now, start our full meeting, and then this is at the very end with all of our items. So it gives us a chance to also think about it. Uh, and I may not have a chance to pull Massachusetts, but I'll send a quick email and see if somebody, John, can pull it for me. So, Betty, if you'll break us, yes. and we'll start here in just a couple of minutes. Thank you so much. Ms. Russell, thank you again. Very good. Good morning. This meeting of the uh, State Board of Cosmetology and Barber Examiners is called to order. <laughs> we will uh, begin this morning by calling the roll. Thank you and good morning. Uh, we are starting at 1015. It looks like the entire morning was a little bit off, but we will get back on track here. Um, I will start by uh, calling us all here. Ms. Kelly Barger, she's not with us. Ms. Anita Charleston also could not join us. Ms. Nina Coppinger. Here. Mr. Frank Ambusa. Here. Mr. Ron Gillahan. Here. Ms. Yvette Granger. Present. Ms. Judy McAllister. Present. Ms. Patricia Parsons. Present. Ms. Janie Ross. Here. Ms. Rebecca Russell. Here. Ms. Mona Sappenfield. Here. And Ms. Amy Tanksley. Here. Thank you. We have two uh, board members not with us, but we have quorum. Thank you. Ready. Uh, as we get started, we always like to uh, recognize our guests, and I believe we've got several schools that are represented here today. Thank you all for coming out today, and uh, I'll be brief, brief, but if somebody from each school could tell, uh, stand up and tell us who you are and where you're from, we really are glad to have you here. Where are you from? Paul Mitchell School. Paul Mitchell. Lab Barber College, Memphis, Tennessee. Premier Cosmetology Academy. It's good to see all you folks here and for you students who came out. Thank you for participating today. Uh, we are running just a little bit uh, short here, so uh, I'm going to be brief. And um, before you leave, if you'd like to come up here and have some pictures made uh, before you leave the session today, it'll be fine after we're finished. Um, the uh, next order of business would be to approve the June 2019 minutes. 
Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? I make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I second that. The motion is properly seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ms. Roxana, we're down to you. Thank you. We're going to be here a minute. We have on our appearing before the board, I believe, a total of six schools before you. First on your iPads and for your presentation is DCI Academy. This is a change in location. If you give me a minute, I'll get Ms. Ms. Destiny Cox. Okay. Ms. Cox is not here. I was under the impression that she would be um, appearing before the board. This is a change in location that she had planned and had tried to make it happen for the um, June meeting, but it, it was not there. I don't know if that's what um, threw her off. If it's okay with the board, we can still review it and make a decision. I don't know that she has to be here. If you have questions, we would have to delay it until October. The floor plan in this particular case is most of the application. Uh, you have that on your iPads on page four. The application fees were received timely. Um, they are moving within the Memphis area, so it, it's I think not a long distance, but um, this is a change in location. If the board is okay and decides to approve it, we still either way would have to go ahead and have a board member go. This is an aesthetic school, not a full cosmetology school. I apologize. So we can approve it pending inspection? Yes, and that's generally what we do, other than if there are questions about the floor plan, we've got always the owner of the school here to be able to ask questions. But if the plan looks good, uh, we would definitely be requiring a field inspector and then a board member. Is this an established school? I mean, like a, lo the location had a cosmetology school at one time? I'm having a deja vu that I've been here before. Oh, it's, it's always been a specialty school. Okay. It's always been an aesthetic school, just moving from uh, Malco Crossing to Mendelhall Park Place. <clears throat> she has plenty of square footage. Mm -hmm. For a specialty school, yes, because yeah. they don't have any square. You're, you're right. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve pending inspection. I second that. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve pending inspection. Any other uh, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you. And I will make sure that we've got an uh, estimated date and then follow up with a board member given that she's not here to That's answer. That's an that. easy inspect. That's down the street. Is it? Okay. Tonight. I'll make a note. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mona. Okay. Next on your iPads, you have a, a change of ownership for Queen City College. If you'll give me a minute, uh, Ms. Gross. Get this thing. Sure that that light's on. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for coming down. Uh, this is Ms. Brandy Gross. She's appearing before the board for a change of ownership. Uh, this is for a cosmetology school license and a barber school license. The school is located in Clarksville. Uh, it is over 7,200 square feet. The business license curriculum, blank contract floor plan, contingency plan, application fee were all received timely. I will let the board have a minute to review all of that information and uh, feel free to ask any questions this is a transfer of ownership that is correct um, so nothing has changed with the school location nothing at all she's taken advantage of updating probably some things on the contract or on the um, contingency plan the floor plan itself is on page 22 um, this school is still her father's and so she's she's being added to the ownership piece for a change of ownership 
we the board has the discretion to inspect any time that they would like but but generally speaking we wouldn't need to unless there was a floor plan change or something along those lines it it can expedite it uh, unless we have a reason to go okay just for clarity is not um one owner is not gonna be there is in addition to an owner so it'll be two owners okay and this is your father's school it is correct and nothing has changed no he's just adding me on it um, and changing the uh, instead of it being a sole proprietorship it'll now be a limited liability company and okay. adding me to it Were there any substantial changes to your contracts? Nothing to affect the students? No. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay We're going with just the field inspector. Is that field correct? Inspector. Okay. That sounds Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Ralph, hello. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we have a change in location. This is for Premier Cosmetology Academy. Uh, give me a moment. I'll get Ms. Smith up here. Okay. Ms. Sharon Smith is appearing before the board for this change of location. The school is um, moving within the same building to accommodate the aesthetics program you have the floor plan in I think three or four different versions so you can take a look uh, because there's anytime there's a substantial change in the layout of a school the closest thing we have to it would be a change in location so that the floor plans can change and again at that time we would require the field inspector to go and if the board sees fit a board member otherwise just a field inspector would suffice and uh, she's, if you have any questions, she'll be happy to answer. Thank you for being here, too. Thank you. Did you folks been offering aesthetics uh, prior, or are you just adding this program into it? We're just adding it. Okay. Our feet we have all together have five thousand. Okay. On the drawings, it looks like you're taking uh, several office spaces and uh, using or uh, converting those to treatment rooms and so forth. Uh, are the offices no longer going to be there, or is it double use? I actually bought a building that goes behind the building to accommodate for the offices that had to be moved. Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Are you ready to be inspected? You are. Okay. <laughs> field Congratulations. <inspector>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, just a field is, inspector. Just a field inspector. Is that okay with the board? Okay. I'll coordinate that this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, you have uh, Salon Qualified Career Center. This is a new school application. Uh, Ms. Lewis. So make sure to push that. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is a new cosmetology school application. The school is located in Memphis. Uh, the business license. Curriculum, blank contract, floor plan, contingency plan, application, and fee have been received. Um, Ms. Lewis, what's the total square footage? 3,000. 3,000. I've made notes somewhere, but then I couldn't find it. I'll let the board review the documents and then ask any questions you have. She's got, um, I think I actually did congratulate her on the documents. It's 
the first time I can think of that I didn't have to ask for stuff or go back and forth. Usually that's where that monthly way helps me because we go back quite a bit in some cases. Um, I don't think I asked for anything, did I? That was a first. That's a big deal. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>
see you. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Spending, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> Absolutely. I can make a motion to approve the request pending an inspection. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, pending uh, an inspection. All in favor say aye. 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 Both say no. Motion carries. I abstain. Well. Thank you, Frank. Frank abstains. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. Is the board wanting to do an inspection? Or are we okay with just the field inspector going? Just the field inspector. Thank you. That makes it easier. Okay. Next, you have a uh, school on your iPads. We're on page 106. This is Vive Barber College, change in location. If you give me just a minute. Hello. Thank you for coming down today. Ms. Tolliver is appearing before the board. Uh, this school is um, located within Memphis and they are moving uh, on your iPads. You have before you the floor plan application fee and um, information received. It was all received timely. You have two applications. The first one was completed using the school name is Kendrick uh, Jefferson, but that is an official application, so I presented it to you. Uh, the second page has by Barber College, so the school's name is not changing. I'll let you review the floor plan and ask any questions for this move. Thank you. Oliver, what is the total square footage? Thank you. For the barbering side, the total building is 5,000. Are you moving the whole school over or just? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Have you made any changes in your documentation other than the names and addresses? No, things? sir. Okay. to make a motion that we approve pending inspection second the motion we have a motion and a second to approve pending mm -hmm. the inspection is there any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed say no motion carries congratulations and good luck with your move thank you <laughs> this is a board member inspection as well is that correct since it's a new location Okay. Are you ready to be inspected anytime yes, soon? Yes, we are. You are? Okay. Um, well, Ms. Sappenfield, Ms. Granger, I don't know if we've got someone that's able to go in the next week, but we can. We I can. can. I'm you available. Can? Thank you, Mona. I'll get you all the information. Mona's going to be busy. Yes. <laughs> it's August. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that takes care of our schools. Um, moving ahead, if, if the board needs has any questions stop me please or if we need to take a break we're on our applicants to test on your iPads you start on page 118 these are applications for examination for Ashley Bowen Shannon Cheatham Jason Christie and Joe Whitaker these applicants have felonies within the last three years and or are currently incarcerated the request is for them to take the Tennessee examination uh, so they have submitted their paperwork, uh, disclosure uh, document, letter from a student, and letter recommendation for the board's review. The board regularly um, approves a two-year agreed order for a probationary license. And I'll let you um, ask us any questions or review the documents before we have a motion.
Roxanne on page 124, um, seeing 1338 on the hours. Yes, and page 129 okay. has um, the, the last piece, the 164 that was pending. She finished at um, her gotcha. cur current location in prison. Thank you. That's a good question. I'd like to make a motion to um, allow these applicants to test with a signed agreed order in two year probationary period. I'll second. I have a motion and a second to approve for the tests for these candidates with a two year agreed order. And uh, was it all? Signed agreed order in a two year probationary okay. period. Signed agreed yeah. order. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the uh, recap of the Reciprocity Committee. If I could um, let you kind of update the full board. We presented four applicants. Um, I believe one, two, two were approved for reciprocity and two, unless I'm mistaken, we're going to be taking an exam. Is there any other update that we need to give the board regarding the reciprocity? We'll do the um, discussion. At the end, if you don't end. mind, it's at the okay. end of our presentation. We would need a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. We are on to our miscellaneous applicants, and these are on your presentation on the iPad, starting with page 140. Four. Our first request is for an extension of continuing education requirement for a master barber instructor from Paul Anabu. This is pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated 62-3-124. An instructor must complete the 16 hours of approved training program. It's at the board's discretion to approve up to one additional year extension for good cause. Mr. Anabu has emailed explaining that he has health issues and has been unable to attend a session prior to his renewal. He's provided a letter from the hospital confirming his situation. Um, he would have needed to attend a session by August of 2018, uh, but again, for health reasons, he missed that. So I will let the board review this information and see if um, he's approved extra time. He had an extension before? He has not. Uh, he's a school owner and has um, hired another instructor to, to teach until he can get better health and then as well attend a session. Make a motion that we grant him the one-time extension. I second it. Motion and a second to grant the one-time extension. All in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> uh, motion carries. Thank you. Next on your iPads, we have a request uh, for an extension of continuing education requirements from a cosmetology instructor, Tamika Cathy, pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated 62-4-114. An instructor must complete the 16 hours of approved training program. It is at the board's discretion to approve up to an additional <coughs> year extension for good cause. Ms. Cathy explained that she had uh, death in the family and close family members going through life-changing circumstances that impacted her ability to complete the 
session. She's provided supporting documents and is asking for the session that she has already completed in June of 2019 to be considered since she was one month past the deadline of taking it. If that is considered acceptable and approved, she actually would be able to get her uh, instructor license back. And the certificate of the course she took is on page 151. She's asking for the uh, one-time extension to stand in. Correct. Instead. She would have needed to have um, taken hers, I believe, by May, if I'm not mistaken. Motion to approve. Second it. Motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, we have a request for an extension of continuing education requirements from a cosmetology instructor, Monica, uh, Ms. Monica Carruthers, pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated 62-4-114. An instructor must complete the 16 hours of approved training program. It is at the board's discretion to approve up to additional year for ex extension for good cause. Um, she has never asked for an extension before and has already attended the session in Knoxville in July. She needed to have attended by June 30th but misunderstood the requirement. And so in her case, it would be the same. If the board approves it, her license would be able to be renewed. Like the motion to approve? A second. <clears throat> motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have a request for an extension of continuing education requirement for cosmetology instructor Danielle Finney. Pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated 62-4-114, an instructor must complete the 16 hours of an approved training program. It is at the board's discretion to approve up to an additional year extension for good cause. She's never asked for this extension before and is registered to attend the session in TSU in August. Motion to approve. Second. You have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. For, uh, request for an extension of continuing education requirement for a master barber instructor, Lamar Hudson, pursuant to Tennessee Code annotated 62-3-124. An instructor must complete the 16 hours of an approved training program. It's at the board's discretion to approve up to an additional year of extension for good cause. Mr. Hudson has never asked for this extension before and he is registered to attend the TSU session in August. Motion to approve the one-time extension. We have a motion and a second to approve the one-time extension. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I'm sounding like a broken record. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> there a way we can give your office the ability to grant the one-time extension if they've not received it before? Um, I think you could. I know we worked on rules that are in the pipeline that are going to drastically change this and require instructors to test when they no longer meet this. But in the time being, um, I, th I think we can. I think we've got the next person isn't a, a, an instructor asking for this requirement. So if, if they've never had it and it's within that year time frame, if the board wants to give us the authority, we I definitely can do that. Motion to give her the authority. Second. We have a motion and a second to grant the director the authority to approve the one-time extensions uh, if they're within the uh, statutory requirements. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Congratulations, Roxana. Something else for you Thank to do. Thank you. Something else to do. <laughs> it'll, it'll get them done faster. And, and as you can imagine, what actually happens um, is at the sessions when I speak, I've never done a session with at least one instructor not being panicked and coming to meet me, either in tears or just the look says it all. And they're attending the session, not realizing that they're past their renewal and that it's within the you know cycle. So... Um, I think it'll move faster, but again, I think in the pipelines, the rules that we have streamline this to where if they didn't take it, they have to test. So um, it, that'll change soon. Thank you. Uh, last on your iPads with our miscellaneous applicants on page 180. This is a request for an extension to complete the coursework from Casey Van. This is pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated 62-4-123. A student shall 
have seven years from the date of enrollment to complete the required courses. Ms. Van explains in her letter that she started school in August of 2012, moved to Oklahoma, and had life-changing events that prevented her from completing her education. She has less than 150 hours left. She's accepted, I believe, at Paul Mitchell and is currently enrolled, ready to start her school, waiting on an approval to see if the board would grant her three additional months to complete the 150 hours. Her hope is to not need all, all three months, um, but she's waiting on a decision before she starts. Pam, does the board have the authority to waive that since the law says shall? Mm -hmm. I think as as Pam looks at this, it is uh, 4-123. The board for good cause has very rarely granted this, but we have in the past. Um, that's not to say that Pam in her wisdom might not find something that says we, we really can't. Um, we've done it for health situations and uh, I think at least once when the time was so close that they could almost finish because in essence, otherwise they would lose all the hours. I think we have a two-pronged situation. Yes, the statute says shall. Done in the past. Um, and she's requesting it in advance of the seven years. I think where what we've done is if they've passed the seven years, um, I get to break the sad news to them that they're, you know, something has happened and they're beyond that. If they ask for a, a small extension beforehand, uh, we had a young lady that the board gave up to five months, I think, extension, and she didn't jump on it and didn't finish it. And then I had to have the conversation with legal, and there was nothing else the board could consider. You'd give them, them that extension. She's not quite out of time yet. No, she's not. She just doesn't know, nor does the school, that she can fit it in, given that she was nervous about starting until after the meeting decided. I promised her I'd let her <laughs> today, so she, in essence, could start school tomorrow. But the 12th is right around the corner. Or August. If we, if we gave it to the end of the month, she, she may get done, but she was, she was hesitant. We can grant her additional months is what you're saying we would grant we her. have in the past when they've asked ahead of time and caught on and, and asked for a minor extension we have granted those for for good cause would, would we put a would we put an end date on that <laughs> 60 days be reasonable since you said I think she's asking for 90 said. right She's asking for three months. It's 150 hours. I don't know that she would need as much as three months, but that's what she's asking for to make sure that she can fit it in. Eight, though, at least it's got a ceiling on it, right? <laughs> Siri makes a motion. Siri, Siri, let's make a motion and let's do it. Okay. Do we have a, a motion on this so we can discuss it more? I'll, I'll make the motion to do the 90 day extension. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion on it? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. To make sure that there's no confusion on the Th three months, which is the 90 days. Uh, because she enrolled in August of 2012, we will give her till November 30th of 2019. That gives her just exactly three months from the end of the month. Does that sound good? Okay, thank you. We are on to the director's report, and that starts on your iPads on page 182. Uh, you have the financial information for fiscal year 2019 through June, which shows a surplus of $262,117. Final numbers for fiscal year 2019 will be available at the October meeting, but this gives you a good view of everything for the year. We had a few months as different um, shared costs were distributed where we were in the red, but I think overall we had hoped and thought with the um, small fee increases that went into effect July of 2017 that, that we'd get to this place and and I, I think that's good. This is a program that barely raised the fees a little so we wouldn't be um, literally um, 
spending everything we were bringing in. So it gives us some type of a cushion for um, different technology and things that are coming up. If you have any questions, let me know. Besides the financial uh, surplus and, and deficit analysis, you have the expenses on the following page and then uh, the complaint civil penalties uh, once they're received those become part of the disciplinary action report and you can see them um, as you all know we our complaint numbers which is good have slowly gone down um, I think the word is out on what the complaint the important complaints are about if it's unlicensed activities just just the good streamlined plan that, that the board has with complaints as well so all that is good. Any questions on the financials? Motion on that to approve? No, not at all. This is information for okay. you all. I went ahead and this month um, also prepared some numbers for us to look at. Again, just informational. Licensing numbers on page 186 uh, reflect the numbers I broke down 2017 and 2018 um, simply as, as information and, and then you have a full count of active individuals. There's an, an increase in every license type just about for the last three years. Uh, 2019 only reflects obviously through July and so we're still missing a good chunk. So projecting out I think all of the different license types will see an increase again we have between individuals, shops, and schools a total of 69,843 active licenses, uh, which is really a large number. And, and active, I know to most of you, you will understand this isn't even including the expired and grace folks, which get up to an additional full year in that category. The shops even get longer. So, and we all know how many unfortunately do miss that expiration. So this number by far probably surpasses 71,000 that can renew at any time. So um, questions on any of those, I welcome them. I have a, a couple of pieces. I uh, wanna bring up the hair braider registration. That started July 1st. It's gone, I think, very well. We've, we still have questions and emails, but um, we've licensed. I've got seven on this report when I ran the report. We, I probably approved three or four more over the weekend. So it, it's working. I think um, a couple of the prisons or, or uh, lockdown facilities are excited about this option. They are actually doing the training in-house because they teach the full curriculum anyway. So they've got individuals that possibly wouldn't have finished the full curriculum coming out with the hair braider registration when they leave. They're doing the training for hygiene and, and, and sanitation and health while they are there. So that, that was something they were very excited to see and hear. I've only spoken at one session since this pat and went into effect in Knoxville. And there were a lot of questions, but in generally I would say people, even, even the school's uh, representation that were there were excited about it. So that's a brand new license item that I've added there. Um, in the shops, those shops that didn't go up in numbers, it's because of the dual shop functionality that we've added because that's increased so I think that looks good as well any questions anything you want to see differently on the master barber licensees that's the highest number we've had since 1972 good. is it really good. yeah I, I've, I've always in my mind had it right below the 5,000 from when I started it always stayed below 5,000 and again not not to pick on one license type versus another there too we see a lot of expired in grace so that this is not even looking at any of those i just didn't want to distort those numbers but there are a lot that can renew you know today right right before they have to test those in the crowd that's 5114 master barbers uh 29054 cosmetologists uh, I want to correct you. Go all the way to the right I'm sorry, to, the to right. active. Okay, so active, those, yeah, right. because I what I did is Prior I took everything years. before and added <clears throat> the breakdown by years. Yes, sir. Fifty-five, fifteen, and thirty-three thousand four hundred forty-five. Um, those are good numbers. Okay, well, for the minutes, I'm going to add these numbers as we post the minutes the next time the, uh, the board approves them. So I thought that was just good information to look at. 
The last item that I have uh, before we get into new business and, and the legal piece, uh, I want us to look at our 2020 dates. Hopefully everybody has had a chance to, they were emailed to you to review. This is uh, the very first Monday of all of the months. Now that we meet every other month, I didn't, um, December 7th fell okay with Thanksgiving, so we didn't have to move it. If those dates look good with the board, I need a motion, and then we'll make sure to update the calendars for 2020. Make a motion to approve. Do you have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And I will turn it over to Ms. Spicer so we can wrap up the uh, legal report and any questions the full board has. Good morning. The committee met this morning and um, I have a couple that I need to point out to the full board, a couple of complaints. On 54 and 55, it was my error in the summary. Um, I failed to use the word expired. It's not without a license. It was with an ex expired license. Um, so the penalty is correct. Um, and I'll make the change to the summary. And on number 43, we're adding a referral to the Department of Health. So this is a microblading service. And that's the only changes that I have. <clears throat> we would need a motion to approve the um, report. I'll make a motion to approve with the changes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, uh, legal report. Any other discussion? Question? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. We are back to um, this is our new business. The first item I have on your iPads is on page let me see, 189. This is our record of withdrawal or transfer form. Um, those instructors in the room and school owners have seen it um, probably more often than they would like. We've not touched on this particular document, I think since um, probably 2017 when we made it one for all the different disciplines. So it is one document for cosmetology as well as barber. And the, the purpose of this document is for schools to complete when a student either leaves because they're transferring to another school, leaves state, or flat out is, is withdrawing. That document at that time should be handed to the student as well as sent to the state board. And this is the way we enter students that haven't finished for the first time. So just as, as a means of information, if a student is on a monthly hour report, we have it on the hour report, but that's the school's information. We don't create student files and start um, an, an application for them or a record, if you will, because we're about licensing. So we would have thousands of these empty records. But when they leave a school, we do, because that's how we know that they started and only did 703 hours. And then sometimes they go to a second school and add 200 hours and so forth. So, so these withdrawals are very important. This document at the bottom used to have a notarization piece. Where, where a notary had to sign, and if you'll remember. And we've moved away from that in almost every document. This is the only document where we left it and felt as a board it was still important to have the notary sign. I'm bringing it back before you because obviously by statute, this document doesn't really exist, right? It's something we just need internally to record hours. But the notary piece is becoming more and more difficult. I actually had two schools recently say, you know, I have these sitting in my desk, but I can't find anyone to notarize. And, and even internally in our building, we have fewer people that notarize and we are paperless. And so with that in mind, I'm asking for the board's per permission. Nothing else is changing on it, but the last chunk is now an attestation. Whoever signing it and completed attests that based on their signature, they are, you know, acknowledging that this is truthful information and they're signing and we do away with the notary. I would say that the person who is uh, attesting to this is the person who reports their hours every month anyway. Correct. 
correct. And we, as you know, we, we got away from uh, having that notarized because we made it an Excel spreadsheet instead of a three piece of paper and all those, you know, that, that we've moved into hopefully better times of using technology to help us. I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this uh, updated form uh, for the record of withdrawal and transfer. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, uh, motion carries. And, and the great thing with having legal counsel sit next to you is Pam caught that at the top of that it still says the form must be notarized. So I will change that to have it say, to, to, to basically just say completed by authorized person at the school or something along those lines. Pam will review it again, but I didn't want to miss this opportunity to, to bring this document and, and change <clears throat> it quickly. So we'll make sure she vets that for me. Thank you. Um, the next item on your iPads is really short and simple, but I wanted to touch base and make sure that we were doing this uh, the best way that the board would like to handle. So, so far we've had several continuing education sessions. I w uh, was blessed to attend the one in Knoxville, and Ms. Russell, I'll give you also an opportunity to, to fill the board in on it. went very well. Um, we received their updated instructor piece, but that made me think that at least I needed to, to make sure that the board is good with this. In the particular case of the Knoxville session, they do breakout groups and different individuals teach each one. And several of, several of the people that teach are also instructors. S many months ago, we had one particular instructor need to ask for the extension because he had been attending every time, but one of the sessions um, the school, the, the continuing education provider, forgot to send us that. So in essence, he was short hours. And that's what prompted the conversation of how can you teach and attend at the same time. So one, I want to make sure that the board is okay with this because it would be the only session where we do this. And, and it's not that I have a problem one way or another, but I don't want that to ever repeat itself. Um, because in that particular case, that instructor for some reason thought it was our fault in the office. And there's no way for us to know who attends unless it's clearly signed and completed. And it's confusing when the instructors just take 10 hours or five hours. And so it's easy for us to miss and not post that. That's not to say that we can't. I just want to see how the board views that. Because in this particular case, we would be giving 10.5 hours to one individual, 13.5 um, hours to another one. Uh, and I I think those may be the only two in the statement. And so I want to make sure that we're okay with that. So eventually, if they, t if they do the same thing the following year, they'd have the 16 hours, I guess. So the person uh, who's, let's take the 10, the 10 hours. They were teaching a class and they want to also receive credit for those hours. They are teaching a class and wouldn't get credit for that class that the they there, taught. The time Teaching. But they would go to all the other sessions and attend those. So if that session broke out for one hour or two hours, then somebody's going to have to keep track of what they're missing in that. Right. And the following year, if they did the same thing, they'd have more than the 16. Right. Um, right. Obviously, it would need to be reported to us correctly so that we could track it. For some of you guys who, who don't go to those conferences and have to participate in that part of it, um, if I guess what I'm seeing is if I took my training this year and did what she just described and I'm teaching a two-hour session, so um, out of that 16-hour weekend, I'm now getting uh, 14 hours. Somewhere during that year or during the course of the next year because we have until the renewal period um, I'd have to make up that two hours somewhere else uh, in an approved class I can see a lot of people not keeping up that well and I can I can foresee a lot of issues with it but I don't have a person I don't have a problem with it I think it would help me a lot of times uh, I might take um, one day this year one day next year and it just kind of stretches those numbers out in your record keeping but as far as the provider who's putting that class on, help me, Becky, the provider that's putting that class on there, they have to keep track of those hours and report them to the board correctly. 
They are reporting them correctly, and I can speak for this Knoxville seminar because in the past I have also taught for them. So when, because we typically only see one group one year and a different group the next year, mm -hmm. those are typically classes that are taught two years in a row. So with that being said, those people who are teaching are attending two years in a row as well. So if they are getting 14 hours instead of their 16, they will actually end up with 28 hours exactly. within, you know, within their two year time period. Exactly. So they're getting well beyond what is asked for. Also, there are schools um, uh, where the accreditation process requires them to have a certain amount of training each year as well. And some schools utilize that same system and then they just send their instructors <clears throat> every year to those things. Lots of those hours as well. Um, I'm just telling you those things for some information to help you, help you make some choices. So. I, I, I have a question because I'm trying to understand this. Um, mm -hmm. So is this um, a case of them asking to be credited for the two hours that they're teaching in addition to the? No. Four? Okay. No. Okay. No. It's just because the hours aren't coming in in a 16 hour <laughs> group. So you'll see 14 hours here and 14 hours there, but because it wasn't reported mm -hmm. as 16 hours, they want to ensure that they do get credit for exactly. the number of hours that they have actually mm -hmm. taken. So it will only come in showing that they have attended only 14 hours this year, but then next year you'll get another 14 hour piece, but it would at least add up to 16, if right. not more. Mm -hmm. As long as they cover the 16 hours in the two years. So what's been Basically, added? cumulative is cumulative. Yes. Yeah. So they can't count when they're teaching. They have to subtract that. Right. Exactly. From the session. So then that's why they don't get the sixteen. And at the problem. end of the session, they're given a certificate that should specify how many hours they're receiving for that. So they really, I'd strongly recommend they hang on to those things. And and that's the only reason I'm bringing it up. We've already had one instructor where we had a situation where either, and and we don't take the certificates. We actually in this program now I have other programs that I'm responsible for where the certificates are what counts. Um, and this time, here we go with the the providers because we only have eight or nine, so it's easy for us to work from them. Um, and so with that in mind, we wait on that list from them that includes them signing in and so forth. Um, and it's, it's a very specific group and it's easier to do. I don't know that every instructor would send us the certificates. And so we'd be going back and forth. So this makes it a little bit easier. But because we had one individual that missed one and had to be presented and, and all that, I just thought I'd, it, was, it would be a good time to make sure that the board is all okay with it. And it, I don't think they're in violation of anything. Oh, no, I just no. think it's worth addressing. That, that you're okay with it and mm -hmm. because this is the method that, that that session provides. It would also look pretty similar. I know we had a few cases in the last year where people um, had to leave the conference and they were sick. They didn't get the full days. And then that time had to be made up as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, been, it's pretty much being consistent. Sounds good. No, okay. That, that's all I wanted to confirm. Um, and we are down to the last item I believe that I have, which is the reciprocity process we discussed at the last meeting. Do we want to continue? This is this is it. So if, we, if the board needs a break, we could take a break. If you want to continue, um, this is that conversation we want to have to see if we're going to make any changes. We'll move forward. We're good? Okay. okay. We'll proceed. I can turn it over to the reciprocity committee since uh, we were very lucky this time we only had four applicants so they had the opportunity to start looking at the two documents that were provided. We discussed this at the June meeting and this would be regarding the process for moving reciprocal applicants considering that in this day and age people move more often between states and not every state has the same requirements we do so the board at the June meeting discussed um, looking at this and evaluating what um, substantially meets means in a, in a situation where we want to have as few barriers as possible for people that are already working in the industry, whether it's one month or 25 years, providing for their families and moving. And so with that plan, the board in June said that they wanted to think about this and you all wanted to propose some things and then come up with a process if if that's the case and so you have before you a document submitted by Miss Russell and Miss Sappenfield for your review and I can turn it over so that those that were in the reciprocity committee can 
kind of guide what we discussed. And thank you both for presenting something. I will just explain this document that I submitted. I personally wanted to be able to view each state as it stands according to ours. So I wanted to see a side by side comparison. That's why I made this document. All of those that are marked in red are ones that meet less than 80% of what we are uh, requiring in our state. Um, it was just a suggestion. I'm okay, you know talking about it back and forth, but I just wanted to see exactly what that looked like. So all of those are, that are in red, and I will note that I did miss a couple that should have been red, but we can still see the numbers here. Um, so 80% or more has been met if they are still in white. Um, also, the testing and notes over to the right-hand side, it tells you what testing company has tested these um, folks, and we'll find that a lot of times it's the same testing company we're using, um, or if there's some kind of oddity um, that's happening in another state. Um, Alaska's manicurist um, is one of those that I've noted, um, that there's some kind of odd testing or odd licensure. Um, so. In uh, Massachusetts that we left a question, they do theory exam and hands-on practical. So there are exams in Massachusetts. Thank you. Like we were talking about earlier, like they come with like 1,200 hours from Florida. And I've had them in my school. I'm sure Ron has too. That they come in, they've already done like three years of working or four years of working and they're short the five years work experience but all you can really teach them is preparing for taking their exam and so they're just killing their 300 hours there at your school and in 300 hours how much can you study for your state laws you know and that's a big barrier for them and I think we've got one that that does go that moved from Florida and had to do the same thing she was just short a year or so so and as I heard you say earlier, too, a lot of these states, in addition to these hours, have apprenticeships attached to them, so they're having you know peer review, and th they that know a lot. That one is especially prevalent in barbering. Um, they have you know eight, less than eighty percent, but in some of those, it's two years apprenticeship in addition to the hours that are there. I would have to go back and research to figure out exactly which ones, but I know barbering is one that that is um, required. Yeah, often. But it's not in lieu of; it's in addition to. Right, so and it's this is the minimum gainful. required hours, and then there could be more requirements. <coughs> so I think really what we're trying to get to here as a group is where we can maybe we can come up with a number. Uh, <laughs> especially this chart's real helpful to me, uh, that we can be comfortable saying <clears throat> if, it, if the number is 80% uh, or 90% or 70%, if that, whatever that <laughs> magic number is, if that's a consistent number we can look at all the time and say, well, this we feel like substantially meets because all these um, are testing with, with testing companies except the ones, a couple that are noted. Um, the, um, the next portion of it would be if they are even less than, than that 80 is 70 percent or some other number. Um, we might still be looking at the hours plus work experience as we do now. And what would that work experience number look like? I have something to say. Uh, I, I think as a board, uh, th there's two parts to this. I mean, the one part is to protect the public with health safety, right? And then the other one is whether the person's going to be talented enough to make a living. And I, I think we get a little too hung up on how much practice they have. Or I mean, I've got I've got kids that work for me. They're doing hair one year. They're ten times better than people are doing hair ten years. And the market's going to dictate whether they can make a living or not, especially in this industry that's, for the most part, commission-based, right? So I think we got to really stay, make sure that we do not waver on, obviously, the health and safety of the public. But as far as the whole mobility or barrier to entry, I, I think we got to be cautious. We're not so license-heavy that people can't 
move from state to state and get a job because they just, quote, <laughs> maybe haven't done enough heads yet. I mean, I, literally, right. I got a girl that works from now one year. I'd put her up against any of my five, seven, and ten-year people, but yet if she moved to another state that maybe had 300 more hours, this is super <laughs> professional, does great work, represents the industry in a professional fashion, and she wouldn't be able to go to work. And then I got some that are at 10 years that might look like they just crawled out of bed and they show up because they've been doing it so long, they're tired and they're not passionate, and they'd be able to go to work right away. So I think we've got to get back to the health and safety of the public. And if we can let people go to work and let them become legitimate, licensed taxpayers, that, that let the market and also let the salon owners. I mean, if I could hire somebody in and they maybe aren't really qualified yet, but they have a great attitude and, and I can work with them, I bring them in. They might not make as much money as, as somebody else, but it doesn't stop them from going and making a living and feeding their family. So I, I think really we've got to be cautious that we're not judging whether somebody's talented enough. I thought they need to be in good standing with the state they're coming from, you know. Well, that's protecting the health of, you know, right. yeah, absolutely. And that piece is not questionable, so we right. can't start a reciprocal application without an active license. And Frank, you might agree, too. I think today with the individuals that we do hire, wherever they come from, that first year, second year maybe, is where all that enthusiasm and ownership and what they want to learn and how they grow, and they grow so fast those first few years, you know, if they're ready, if they really are the people that are going to stick with it and have a passion for the industry. But um, I, I can't say, you know, down four or five years that they're gaining that much in advanced education. You know, they just kind of hit a plateau at that point is what I have noticed. So I think that, you know, even if they move from a, another state and they have even three years, uh, I, I would suggest that that is a good number to bring it down some from the five years. I'd like to suggest that a, um, at a very minimum, reciprocity be granted for anybody who is at least equal to or greater than our number of hours. Um, and arguably even 80% if they've already got a license regardless of numbers of years the the curriculum the textbooks are written by two textbook manufacturers so basically no matter where you're going to school in the United States we are teaching the same information so at a very minimum the ones that are equal to or greater than regardless of numbers of years of experience I would suggest they be granted reciprocity and, and they are they you are. all never see yeah. those I approve those every day. We're just trying to make it a little uh, streamlined. I mean, Consistent, you're maybe? trying to lower it so we can get more people in. I just think you have to be careful about unintended consequence, consequences. For example, if I'm a student in Tennessee and I'm going to school, I'm like, I've got 80% of this. So let me go ahead and test because that's what everybody else is doing. I could, I could move out of state. I could go to Florida, save me some money because I only have to get 1,200 hours. And then I'll just uh, test and come to Tennessee, and and, and it, it'll be easier. I don't have to take the full 15. I just think you have to be careful about education. If we are requiring 1,500 hours, we're surely doing that for a reason. We are. That's what we've decided the curriculum needs to be. And um, so if it's only important that 80% of that is important, then why aren't we just requiring 80 percent I don't know I'm just thinking about from a teacher standpoint about curriculum and I know every state has different requirements and if we just throw ours out the door and you know I I don't know just thinking through it I'm not really against people going to work but still uh, requirements are requirements well when you say you sure there's a reason for it I I've asked what the reason was and nobody's really given me a good answer yet because I, I've hired people from a lot of states. I can't tell the difference between a student that comes out of a school that did 1,000 hours versus a student that came out of a school that did 1,500. And maybe the argument can almost be that, and, and I've witnessed this myself, and I know the school owners in the room, and I, I'm just going to ask you to be open-minded for a second. You can almost see students lose some enthusiasm two-thirds of the way through school because of how long it might be to get into the workplace. I mean, I've seen it myself, because I, I have them as apprentices on the, on, uh, as assistants in the salon. 
So just because somebody's 2,200 out west doesn't mean they're going to produce a better student than a Massachusetts state that's 1,000. I agree with that. Even when I went to high school, the number of uh, credits I had to get were different then than they are now. And they continue to change them and revamp them. And, that, and like, is it better? No, I don't know. You know, it just, it's a continuous change. And I don't like that um, it's just the requirements are so varied within the states. That's the problem. That is the problem. That is the problem. But why are we requiring 1,500 hours if all 1,500 aren't necessary? In another state, though, <clears throat> if they've passed that exam and they have worked any, the work that they do in a salon is that that's actually more experience than they would get in the school because they're actually dealing with the public there well i agree with that that's the true i mean public. that might be a case for the apprenticeship program which we were kicking and screaming about to start with well considering it had zero parameters why wouldn't we kick and scream yeah, yeah true <laughs> Not, not to add to it, but those of you that don't attend sessions and may not be aware, but PSI has the statistics showing that in less, in, in a little over a year, the testing individuals coming through the apprenticeship program are testing better than the traditional students. And I knew we'd get there, or that was my thought, because you all developed the rules in a very thoughtful way, asking for the theory to be passed and so forth. But, um, I mean, this quickly, every one of the license types when you take the total number of apprentice students and how many passed versus the traditional, uh, the, better, the numbers are better for apprenticeship. And if I could just revisit Nina's that conversation. Generation, it, they're, they're just fast track. They, if they're, we're at 1,500 and we're saying, well, this is there for a reason, well, how about the states that are 1,800 and 2,000 and 2,100? Are we, are we behind? I don't know. That's just what we, that's <laughs> that, just that, our that's requirements. But now we're saying we don't have to have all that. But we're not, right? We're only reviewing reciprocity. So reciprocity is a person that finished school under the laws of another state, tested under the requirements of that state, has an active license, and worked. Now, we have to decide, or you all do, worked two days, does work even matter, or worked up to a year, or five, whatever in between. But that person was able to provide for his or herself and family possibly before the move. So now we bring them here and look at them almost to meet exactly what our students are doing. I, I'll give you a perfect example, and it's myself. I moved from New Jersey that does not have a barber school, where I had to serve an 18-month apprenticeship program under the same master barber, just to have the ability to test. I pass that test, I test, uh, test out, I get a license in New Jersey. I'm working a good amount of years in New Jersey. I come to Tennessee, I could not get reciprocity. Right? I had a five month old baby. I couldn't work until I got, uh, and back then you couldn't take a test just anywhere. You had to come to Nashville. And it was, the tests were spread out more often. So I had to find a model, come down and do a haircut and shave here in, in Nashville. And halfway through my haircut, the instructor calls me over and I figured maybe I'm doing something wrong. And he said, well, listen, we got a, a barber's uh, convention here in about two months. Would you please be an instructor and do some haircuts for the barber instructors because they got to get continued education hours to be barber teachers. So here I am being held up, being able to feed an infant. And obviously the, the work was there. So, you know, again, I, I wasn't able to work in Tennessee. You're an exception. <laughs> he, oh, he's been he's, an exception. he's overachiever. Okay. <laughs> All right. Something I wanted to also bring up is of our bordering states. So if someone's living on the border of another state and they're thinking about running over there and doing 300 less hours, um, there's only one in barbering. So out of cosmetology and barbering, there's only one in barbering that has a lower number of hours than we do. So it's not like they're going to live on the border and then just go over. So these are definitely going to be people that are transferring in. And we all know life happens. You know, they're going to transfer in from other states with these licenses. I don't see anybody moving to Florida to get their cosmetology license on purpose um, just to live there and go to school for cosmetology and come back. I mean, it could happen, but how many people are we going to see that do that? We have some at the federal school, am I right, Miss Kate, that come up from Alabama 
for aesthetics because ours is 750 and Alabama's 1,000. And Fayetteville is right on the line of Alabama. So we see a lot of those, don't we? But we don't have any bordering states. Other, We have one that borders that has less in barbering. But all of the rest of our bordering states have more, at least equal to or more hours required. So I don't think anybody's just going to run across the state line. Right. Don't try to build a wall. It's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are talking um, about people who have active careers and that career interruption when it, it's, you know, I think there should be an easier entry. Uh, you know, there are career students that, you know, try to get all the hours and things that they can do, but like Frank was, you know, trying to establish, he had a family to feed, you know, and he was life interrupted and not just the move, but he couldn't work. So, uh, but certainly capable to work. We've got to come to some place in experience and school that I think is a little bit less than what we've been doing. Um, this morning I mentioned, uh, for some of you might not have been here, but um, <coughs> if you just look at the chart, there's one, when it comes to cosmetology, there's one state on the list that does not meet or exceed Tennessee's. Uh, 1,500 hours on the barber side. There are 15 total schools. Uh, eight of those require one third, a full one third or greater uh, amount shorter than Tennessee does. So they're at a thousand or less. So that's uh, 11 altogether on those. When I look at the uh, manicure, by far that is the field. Because we don't want to forget that what we're talking about here is not just barbers. Um, the manicure is almost the opposite. There's um, most of the other states, it appears, are not up to our minimum requirements. Um, so when we look at the numbers of those folks coming in under that field, uh, are, are, would we be substantially lowering our standards on that particular one? Um, I know we're, we're hearing a lot of things here about is it required? Why, why are we doing these hours? Why do we is why is, we need 1,500 as opposed to 12 or 1,800? Um, as an educator, uh, I just have to stand up for the field and say that um, the value that is built into those hours is absolutely incumbent upon that school and that instructor. Now, if you feel like maybe a particular school, if someone comes to that school to to get additional hours. That they're wasting their time. Maybe we ought to look at our education programs within the school. Uh, I would not feel that way if someone came to my school because I know that I would have uh, the material to fill those gaps and fill those holes that they are missing from the other places. Notwithstanding, you can learn a lot, and individuals are always different. Some people are uh, more. Um, uh, they have a stronger work ethic, if you want to look at it in that simple sense, or they're. Uh, they learn a little more quickly. But that doesn't mean that just because you finished this lesson, that as an educator, that's where you stop. It's not just getting to today's lesson. Well, we put that one to bed and took the test. That's the end of it. What more can we teach those? We can expand uh, all of the knowledge that are found in those Milady and Pivot Point um, textbooks. So knowledge is good. And uh, if uh, a good teacher is going to find a way to stimulate that student that has to do more hours to, to catch up. And frankly, I would say look at the curriculum from the school that they're coming from or the state they're coming from. There's something missing. They can't cover with the same depth and specificity in 1,000 hours that you can cover in 1,500 hours. You just can't do it. There's a lot of practical work that has to be done in there. Um, a, a clinic floor in, in an active school should be the place that those students are, are whatever their field is in this, ought to be practicing on the clients, uh, on living people, getting real world experience that would equate to that time period that that person is working out uh, in a shop in another state because they had those hours, okay? So uh, I know we're trying to figure out what to do with that difference in the hours, but I really, I really have to say those things because um, there is value in those hours. There is value in that time that, that's being required. 
uh, we weren't, uh, this particular group of people weren't involved in the original uh, uh, development of the curriculum that Tennessee uses. And this is what we've all inherited and what we've used, and it appears to be the same thing I used 30 years ago. Okay, uh, the books have changed uh, and been updated, but the curriculum hours remain the same. So um, remember, uh, in a school scenario, you're actually uh, trying to teach to that person who is the advanced excelled learner as well as the person who's struggling, who can't read and write, who comes through other school systems with other issues. And you have to meet all those people uh, uh, head on and deal with all of those uh, situations as they arise um, individually, not just as a group. Uh, I don't think you hold anybody back because someone else can. But there is an answer for, for why we need these hours. I do believe, like, like uh, Becky, since she's put this together, that there is a personally that there is a um, um, place somewhere within this that I think if we're looking at how many years of work experience are going to equate to a certain number of hours because we're already looking at the reciprocity they've already got a license what's holding folks up is how many years of work experience they have it's not the number of school hours they've got it's that work history so if we can kind of maybe look just at the work history and see what we think fits there. Um, if it's five years, that's what it is now. If it's two years or three years, we have to ask the legislature to change that, would we not? Or is that within our rules? We have the wording substantially meets. Okay. And we're really just defining what substantially meets so that we can be consistent in our And we've been very consistent. We've been same number of hours or five years. And, and with very few exceptions, um, aesthetics is one of those exceptions because it's hard to finish 50 hours. I think at one point we, we had several states that were only 50 hours short. But for the most part, we look at same number of hours in the five years. And, and then everything in between comes before the board. We're always going to have those folks who come from other countries, other states that require a lot more. Um, great. They're just highly qualified. It's a shame if they didn't work the last two or three years. I don't think it's fair to, to keep them from working like it would have you, Frank. To, um, to make them because they didn't have five years work experience. Um, but if we're going to accept them into, our, into Tennessee under our licensure based on less school hours, then uh, because otherwise they would pass right through, then that work experience does become important. Okay. Okay. If, if we were doing the, you know, five hours, I mean, excuse me, five years, the last five years if we change that to three let's just say two or three years and maybe it not have to be in the past two years would that be acceptable you're saying some work I would experience agree but not with necessarily you. in the cons consecutive yes. two years just like because. you know the one case we had this morning sure. the first case right. sure and, and another thing, and you all know this much better than I do, I'm sure, uh, we struggle with getting the work experience because a lot of call themselves, well, I, I freelance. I, I don't have it in my tax records. That's the bottom line. That's what hurts the industry immensely. We don't know what individuals make, whether it's great or not great, right? It's just not there. So they struggle with those tax records that prove anything in the work experience. Or I left a shop and, and not the best of terms. I can't get a letter of recommendation. I can't. So, I mean, just, I, I don't want to keep adding more, but mm -hmm. th those are realities of the industry. If you went to the bank as a barber to um, uh, get a mortgage for your house and you told the banker, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I've done work, and I freelanced, but I don't have any records to show what I earned, I don't think you're going to get a mortgage from my banker. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Uh, you don't want any mortgages. <laughs> 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 All right, so. They want cars. It's the same process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want cars either. They don't want cars. Yeah. 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 Uber. <laughs> <laughs> or a the scooter. bird. They want to get on a bird and go. So do we have uh, now Rebecca's made a suggestion here for to look at that 80 percent number and um, do we have any recommendations uh, would you say for number of years of work experience that we can talk about? 
Okay, three years? I would, I would agree. agree with three years. And is this directly um, prior to their moving? Or is it three years? It needs period? to be continuous career. I mean, we're doing this for people's careers, not for them just to carry around a license to start practicing in ten years. You know, it's so. Like what if they had, What if they had a, two babies in a row and didn't work, and now all of a sudden we're <laughs> going to start judging whether they should let them work, man? I mean, uh, right? Does it have to be? You know, in, in the last, the previous three years, just you know, three years work experience. And why three? Just out of curiosity, why five? Why why not one? Why? I would. I really would suggest one one year of work experience I'd to get them in, into. I'd say one in a minute. Working because if they're not good, they they're yes. just not good. They either um, just, make it or they won't. Right, but I don't think we should prevent them from being able to have that opportunity. I mean, if they yeah, one look, year. if they, if they pass the the proper testing in their state to be able to get licensed. All right, and they know health and safety to public. I mean, I, I it don't benefit me in any way or the other, but I'm just thinking, hey, man, when I came here, just give me a shot at being able to have a job. And if I'm I can't fresh. do hair, I'm going to starve to death. <laughs> right? But that's my problem. Frank, can I, can I ask you a question? Obviously, with your, your experience and your knowledge and everything, uh, of course, you, you would have a really strong opinion, I think, on this. What do you think is the right number of years of experience to have? What would you like to see? I don't know if you have to have any, but I think a year would be fine with me. I would because I, I just I don't know where we become kind of the the judge of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, to me, three. If somebody has it for three, and what makes them better than somebody with one? I, I, You're right. I, I just I feel like uh, I agree. Well, mm -hmm. also, if you really think about it, uh, one year of full-time experience versus five years of four hours a day, one day a week, those are still not equal. So Good. if we're looking at it, somebody with a year's worth of experience could technically have more than someone with five years experience. And I, I have a comment on that. Um, with the previous um, deregulation issues for the field that I'm in, the um, people wanting people to be able to work sooner, get out into, they want to take, you know, natural hair stylist license completely away because they want people to get out there and work. So why, as a full cosmetology or a barber, do they need five years to start working? You know, if you have one year in that active license going on, go in and work. I mean, the unemployment rate is already exceptionally high. So just work if they if they do not have the experience it's going to tell in their work they're going to have to find something else anyway roxana can you um state right now how we grant recipro reciprocity for anybody that's li like this this is what we do now and if we change it this is what we're coming off of yes um so reciprocity needs an active license so every now and then you'll see someone that's on probation needs to be presented. It has to be the same license. So if it's hair design versus cosmetology, I'm stuck. It's not the same license type. So as long as it's an active license and the same or greater number of hours and exams, I approve them all day long. There's no questions asked. That, that is beyond substantially meets. When we evaluate that, we're looking at the hours. So if they're coming from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, it's 1,200, 1,250, we're stuck, right? That number of hours is below ours, so they don't substantially meet. And there we look at the five years. It has to be the last five years. If they present tax records, um, ownership of a shop, letter of reference, and the two exams, we approve them because the five years have come in lieu of the hours. I approve them. You all don't see them. If they don't have the last five years, they come before the reciprocity committee. So Florida, for example, on cosmetology doesn't have the practical exam. So they have 1,200 hours, short on hours. The experience could substitute. The practical's missing. What we voted on maybe two meetings ago was if they had 10 years experience, the practical could be waived. So then I've got a new avenue. I could possibly approve them in the office without bringing them for the board if, the, if they had the 10 years. But if they don't, the five years, the two exams, the number of hours, all those moving pieces are evaluated on a case-by-case. -case. There's no single state 
I just recently found out there are some states that don't accept from other states. We don't have such a thing. We consider each person with an active license that's the same as ours and then weigh out the hours, the experience, the exams. Those, those three pieces, if you will, to the triangle. Hours, exam, and then experience. So if we look at this and we take Ms. Russell's recommendation of 80% of the number of hours, that takes care of a good number of the license types. Definitely cosmetology leaves aesthetics with few exceptions, barber some, definitely a big gap on manicuring, but it's still a huge improvement in where we're at now. We're still looking at the exams, I believe, from, from the recommendation. And then if we lower the five years to whatever that magical number is, we're definitely moving faster, quicker, getting them to work faster. And in, in many cases, the recommendations when we haven't been able to have the exact experience we see fit, uh, they haven't worked in the last five years, and so we put them to test, that's been our way to protect the public, is the exams. Let, let me just mm -hmm. add to that and bring, bring us up to date on uh, some movement that's going on in the industry, is we have in this book uh, that Texas has 1,500 hours for Cosmo. That, which is inaccurate okay. now because they just changed the bill. The bill has just been passed that okay. it's been lowered to a thousand. All right, uh, and you see more states looking at that very strongly now. And finally, just recently, the beauty schools did get together with Texas because it is law now. So now, okay, it is what it is. How do we get together and make that work? All right. So the movement, is, velocity. Look, the whole everything's moving faster. I mean, when we look at electronics and technology, and it's all moving faster. So that, that's being cut by 3,300 hours. Now, that would be a state that if that's the beginning of this movement, and then we go by 80%, what's that? 300, does that make it 1,200? Mm -hmm. Numbers-wise. Mm -hmm. All right, still might be high. But uh, when you see a state like Texas with the amount of licenses they have and, and the strong... Uh, government that's there to be willing to go from 1500 to 1000 I just don't want us to be majoring in minors and then all of a sudden you see this big shift going on in the industry because the one thing we got to do with this the bigger picture of all this story is protecting licensing in general because that's the whole big story out is and, and the, the movement behind both from a financial standpoint and a reset resource standpoint is to de-license the industry so if we're going to have to come together with not only us, but every other state in the union to have some kind of parity across the board that makes us be an industry that has to act together. I mean, we look at us versus medical or uh, teachers or whatever the case is. You can go from state to state and be licensed. And here we are having this giant barrier of entry, lack of mobility, and, you know, I think we got to lower the barrier of entry. All right, and, and we got to give, let the marketplace dictate and give everybody a shot at making a living in this country we call America. I think maybe it would be um, good if we're having a huge issue with this is to go back and research what are they learning in that thousand hours. Because if you told me today that I had to drop my curriculum from 1,500 to 1,000 hours, I'm going to throw out technique. And all I'm going to be teaching is sanitation and okay. keeping them safe to the public. So I want to know, you know, if it's that what we're worried about, can these people be safe to the public and learning more technique in the salon? Is that what those states are doing? Well, he, you know, back to Ron's conversation earlier, he made a great point for the profession and for school owners. I know the school owners that are in this room. If the schools were going to run like these schools, it should be 200, 2,000 hours and send them out like super. But the problem is the majority of them aren't doing that, right? I know I, know I, I travel all over the country and I go into these beauty schools and kids are watching Netflix collecting hours. And, and it's sad to say, but it, it's truth, right? And I know it's not the people in this room and I know it's not a lot of my friends that do it. But at the end of the day, if 80% are doing that, I bet you there's 500 wasted hours like this in schools that aren't doing what you guys do. So I think that's, that's the biggest issue, is the lack of parity of level of professionalism and the delivery of quality education in beauty schools nationwide. And it's a big, big subject, and it's a big, big picture. Today, uh, we've got this little piece in front of us. 
Uh, Roxana, do we do we need to make a final decision on this today? Uh, no, we, this we this is your work bit? product. It's whatever you decide to do. Okay. Um, right now, just just for my benefit, please, would it be unfair to, for me to ask you, um, maybe by show of hands, uh, where are we uh, individually? Do you think we need to stay at five years, four years, three years? Uh, would y'all mind if I ask that question? Can okay? I ask the question too? Sure. Uh, of all the ones that come lacking hours, have, most of them have at least one year experience, right? 90% of them would? We're getting more and more right at the one year. Yeah. And this has been recent. This has been in the last year <coughs> and a half of, of the just got Work the license kind yeah. of thing. But generally speaking, yes, we had closer to the five years. If, if I look at historical, we were pretty close. And now we've, we've really dropped. People are moving faster. So if we went to the but, one but year. But the one year would, would catch the vast majority. M most of them. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Okay. That's what uh, I want to know. And if you don't feel like uh, a show of hands, that's okay, but I'm going to ask the question. Do any of us think that we still need to have five years as, as this magic service number? What about four years? Still too much? I'd uh, make a motion to say one. One year. I'm just, I'm, I'm leaning toward that, that we don't accept 80% of hours from anybody. I don't like that at all. I think you meet the number of hours or exceed the number of hours that we require. But lowering the work experience, like maybe you have two years of experience in the last five years or something. I don't know. But uh, that doesn't cause me as much indigestion. As well, that's, your, that's the only thing on the floor at the moment anyway, though, right? Yeah, yeah we're, we're just yes. discussing the whole the whole basket I'm here just because where I am there's so much this. to this. So. Yeah. <laughs> I suggest one year as well and um, it's due to a lot of the reason that Frank was saying we're going to have to come together and be more accessible to getting people out to work. And if they already have a big mass of um, people trying to deregulate licensure anyway, at some point we're going to have to shake hands with each other and come to some kind of agreement. Five years is extremely too much. Three years, maybe, but one year, of course, the numbers will go up and people will get to work. Yeah. That's where I stand. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to call for a motion on on this today. I think that there's uh, quite a bit of, of uh, thought that we've provoked here this morning. I don't want to kick this too far down the road because we need to make a decision on it. But we have we have made some um, some some really strong arguments in a lot of directions here. There's. Uh, the idea to to set a minimum number of hours that that can be uh, considered as substantially meets because sometimes we're looking at 100 hours, 150 hours, or 500 hours, and they're all still asking for reciprocity. So, is there a consistent number? I, I don't know if we've ever kept statistics, but if we went back and looked, um, there's probably uh, could be extrapolated a number that says, well, on average, that numbers come out. Uh, 1,325 hours, who knows? Uh, but I, I'll bet had we had the, the, the abilities, we could have come up with that number and see what we've done in the past and passed forward those items. Um, the idea about the years, I think, um, of experience, I, I think that we're all maybe looking in, in the right general, or not in the right, in the same general direction as far as uh, substantially lowering that number of years. Um, but uh, if we need to have a motion, Roxana, if we need to do something definitely today, then we certainly can do that. But I, I don't know that you need to. If, if, if we have a motion and someone thinks they're at that decision, you could, and, and it could, you know, be split down the middle. I don't know. We can definitely come back in October. You've, you've all got the document that Ms. Russell prepared. I don't think you have Ms. Sappensfield, but I can um, get them to everyone and, and go back and forth and come back in October if if that's what we're going to do if, if you all are undecided I don't I don't know just a few minutes I can tell you some of the changes that are going on this subject in aesthetics across the nation but um, due to the growth of the medical spas and the estheticians nationwide becoming a, a true workforce for medical spas working in physicians offices 
uh, we've come up with a dilemma where spa, uh, medical spa owners, physicians have called me and they say, I've got one esthetician position open and I have a 30, 130 applicants, but I don't have anyone that can do what I need for them to do in my medical spa and what the scope of practice is there. So um, years ago, uh, the dermatological, the Society of Determ Dermatological Nurses came up with a 1200 hour work study course because not every nursing school graduate could work in a dermatology office either. And they faced this short, you know, kind of a shortage of the workforce of people who were capable, but they really didn't have a course for it. So they created NCEA um, and that same test for the Society of Dermatological Nurses has become a national certification for estheticians. And we have three states now that have taken that 1200 hour work study course and done a second tier for aesthetics. And it's been approved by their states and, and accepted into law that they have two tiers of that kind of study. So just to kind of present that to you, we've um, run into that one time in reciprocity when I was uh, on the board and we had someone come in with Sedesco and, and that uh, is a 1600 hour work study course. So, and I, I, I am Sedesco certified. So I knew this and so there's some, a higher credentialing in aesthetics now for people who really want it. But uh, again, the states have to cross boundaries and recognize it and everything. But they didn't, um, the states that accepted it didn't want to disturb what was going on for people who didn't want to work in medical aesthetics because it's certainly a time valued profession and career to work in aesthetics under the scope of practice of, you know, not working for a physician. So there, there's two sets of standards there. And um, many states are looking at that and moving forward to fill that entry into a career in medical spas that uh, is just growing exponentially. So. Uh, you know, um, I'm not a very arbitrary person, so I'm going to take back what I said a minute ago about, about motions. <laughs> Does anybody want to make a motion? <laughs> would anybody like to make a motion about this today? No. Or would we like to, to sleep on it till the next meeting? <clears throat> okay. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. I'm not meaning to. What? Um, I just wanted context for the Texas changes, Frank. They're still keeping both license types. They're still going to have a cosmetology license and a barber license. I believe so. But they're just both. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. I can find out for you. I'd just be curious. Yeah. Because I noticed on this, you know, there were a couple takeaways. I was surprised that, you know, last year we talked about joining our licenses. It doesn't appear that other states are on that path um, and that many of them have quite a few disparities between their license types and the hours, where ours are at least the same. Many states have different hour requirements, which was interesting to me. And then also what was very interesting to me was the manicure requirements and how many more states have far less hours required. That was eye-opening to me as well. So I would just be curious, if Texas is setting a precedent as a large state with a large number of licensees, could you get more information about uh, yeah, it's what that That's a phone call away. Like? And, and the thing is, my belief, as I'm looking at you now, is that that was Cosmo that, that was changed Cosmo. from 15 to 1,000. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I'm speaking on behalf of Barbers, but I will find that out. Matter of fact, Rox, I, if I can get that to you and you can Absolutely, distribute that uh, yes. information to the board, that'd be great. And but I, I think because I agree with you, I, I don't want to create any rules that we just have to change in six months. If we know where things may be headed or what the trends are, we can <clears throat> hopefully discuss what those might be. I think we got to look at what's moving forward versus what's always been behind us. I think that's what kind of holds us, bogs yeah. us down, right? Yeah. So it's kind of a new day and there's, there's a lot of movement. And I mean, just the velocity of everything is evident when you say it used to be kind of five-ish and now it's one-ish. That's kind of society in general, you know? So. Well, and I was also pleased to see that, you know, we use PSI, right? So as I look down this list, you know, PSI seems to be the tester of choice for 
the majority of states, and so there are some similarities there with at least us understanding what that testing process looks like. Clearly not all states, but a large majority of them are using some professional testing. She's pretty adaptable, though, with PSI, and it, I learned that from being a part of that committee. It was not all states are taking the same PSI exam, though. Right. Yeah. Texas was PSI as well. Yeah. And, and remember, that's just the provider, right? They, as, as Becky pointed out, we do share some questions, so there there's a possibility that we share. But the process is similar. The, the location, the theory that yes, they're, they're, and how they train their proctors, right? Their proctors are the important piece for the practical. They get they would get trained exactly the same way. They're going to look for different things because the practical exam is developed in each state, but the way they conduct and train their proctors would be the same. Yes. If it would be helpful, I will take a look at um, some of the curriculum issues from some of these states and see what may be missing from some of those, and I'll, I'll get that to Roxana so we can get it out to everybody to take a look at. Too. That may be helpful maybe in, in deciding what, what is uh, missing here or, or what's not. Are they just doing it faster than we are? Um, I don't know. So. Well, look, I was in Japan last year, and it's a five-year apprenticeship because I went to like 12 barber shops. They're the best barbers in the world. Five years. I mean, they commit suicide in year three because they don't want to wait two more years. I mean, it's like, it, it's, I'm, it's funny. There's, there's, I, I, I don't even say that joking around. I mean, there, there's issues with that wait forever too. I mean, but seriously, it's a, it's a five year apprenticeship, full time on the job, which to them is like seventy hours a week. It's crazy. So you know, does it take that long to be great? But at the end of the day, that's not how we're operating, right? So let's let's the market dictates in 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 a country like ours. I think we'll all agree that it's better to get this right than to get it fast. And if we can get it resolved at our next meeting, it'd be great. That'll be something to look at. Okay. Feel free to send me anything <clears throat> that you want to share, and then I'll okay. get that out as quickly as possible. Um, I think we briefly updated on the continuing education in, in Knoxville that went very well. Uh, we've got TSU here this month, and am I correct that Knoxville. And, um, for TSU Ron's gone. in August, Ron's gone. Okay, so I will see you there, and then we have one in Clarksville as well that's going on this September, month. Do you remember what date that was? Pardon me? Clarksville's date is September? August 26th. August 26th. Yes. Um, 25th, 6th, I think, is Monday, so it would be the 25th and 26th. And those are, of course, always on our website. I did have one other item I don't that isn't on the agenda, but in following up on a school inspection that was pending, I don't know if Ms. Granger wants to update the board. We have a school that was approved in June. I believe, unfortunately, she's gone twice already, and uh, they, they failed to be ready for an inspection, so she wants some guidance on the board, and I guess I do, too, on how to proceed. And Ms. Granger, anything that you want to add and, and inform them on? Yeah, so um, we're talking about the new pyramid school that um, is a new school, but not really. Um, <laughs> so on July 16th, I went to um, inspect the school, and there were no files available. There was not an office available. There was no sign notifying students were servicing clients. And I was also informed that the contract that had been presented to the board had been changed. So the results of that was a rescheduled inspection to come back. And um, the contract, unfortunately, on my behalf was not mentioned to Roxana in a timely manner before I went back. Um, it's just my misunderstanding that, you know, they had not shown that new contract to the board. So um, upon coming, returning on July 31st, no one was present at the building. And I called and talked to Mr. Bryan, and he notified me that he still wasn't ready and wanted to follow up the following week for me to come come back. Now, my recommendations on this particular situation is um, they need to come before the board, one, to show the new contract, because they had not shown the new contract. <laughs> and then, two, is just to ensure that they're ready for inspection, because they've, they've wasted time a couple of times before. So that's what I have to say about that. I mean, it's already, this is a red flag <coughs> school, and they're, they are not ready, um, and they've changed the contract. They're not open, are they? No. 
I mean, equipment wise, they're ready, <coughs> which I've showed Roxana a video. Have they set but their hours yet? Their hours would be on the contract that they presented at the last meeting, mm -hmm. and um, it is mostly nights, as mostly we determined. Nights. So so the inspections are going to be something I'll have to figure out because our field people work 8 to 4.30, but <coughs> we can work around that. But the inspection of a board member and a field inspector were going to be Monday through Friday during normal work hours, and, and I believe that's how they had scheduled, but I, I don't think you were alone in trying to get an inspection done and not being able to finish it. I think Mr. B our field inspector, Mr. Biddle, was kind of on the same situation. But after the first time that you went in vain and the files weren't there, um, that kind of thing, it, to me, I value a board member's time immensely. Uh, your time here is valuable. Your time going <coughs> to an inspection, that's something that, you know, just couldn't be ignored. So her going, uh, you going a second time and it's still not being ready is, is troublesome because I actually interfered and, and, and stated that, that that shouldn't happen. I think by the time you ask a board member to come, you should be ready. And, and, and at that point, after the 16th, I was guaranteed they were ready. And they do have my direct com um, contact information. When you say no files were there, were there people there that day? No people there. Um, it was just the owner, the assistant, and um, someone cleaning up. Okay. So. Say perhaps the results of that inspection ought to be the one that stand, because you were there to inspect them and they weren't prepared. So uh, if, if they weren't prepared to be open, then that would, it, that would create the result, would it not? It's an incomplete inspection, and if we take it as that, they could automatically have to present a new application and appear before the board. Um. What happened to you? That How did you find oh, out I'm that the contract changed? She told me when I asked her to see it. Um, she she said, told you. Who told you? the assistant, and I cannot think of her name. I can't either, and I hate that because um, when I emailed and apologized and was very upset that Ms. Granger had to go in vain, um, she did email me back and she, yeah, on behalf I, of Mr. I don't Ryan. think the assistant name is on any application or anything like that. She, no. I didn't even know who she was. Actually, I thought she was just, you know, uh, uh, somebody else. Anyway, um, yeah, so she... When I asked for the contract, I said, well, do you have files? Do you have your contract? Do you have your sign-in? Do you have your sign posted? She said, oh, I have to have all of that? And I said, yes. And she's like, oh, well, I will show you the contract, but we've changed it. Like if she went out of her way, you went out of your way for them, they should have to reappear before the board with the incomplete. I'd like to see a new, yeah. a new school That's what I um, think. application. By comparison to, to the wonderful schools that we have in Memphis, I, I just yeah. can't believe it's gotten this far, yeah. even. <laughs> yeah, personally, I wouldn't have um, approved the school to even open, personally. I, I didn't go in. I stayed on the sidewalk and we're, say that. We're going to take a recess for about two or three minutes, if you would. Thank you. We'll be back in five minutes. Thank you. here um, thank you for indulging that brief recess um, picking back up uh, thank you for doing your report uh, want to re kind of recap where we're at this was an update that you're giving on an inspection that was scheduled uh, for the new pyramid that's correct okay and they weren't prepared and they weren't ready uh, for your inspection when you arrived been pre-scheduled Okay, uh, since you know this item is uh, just an update and a report for our benefit, I think that it would probably be appropriate to uh, uh, suggest that New Pyramid represents an application based on their incomplete inspection uh, and appear before the board to um, do so. Would we have a motion? to uh, have them come back in and represent a application. I'll make a motion for them to represent. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to have them represent a 
new or present a new application based on the incomplete um, report presented here today. Uh, is there any other discussion? I'm sorry, uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. I think those were all of my updates. If the board has anything else to report, uh, to take care of, in October we'll update on a few more of the continuing education sessions. Just as a recap on the continuing education session, just as a quick reminder, we can only have one board member. Um, if you've forgotten or are missing the information, I'll be happy to send that to you as we wrap up. And because we meet in October and not in November, I will have all the continuing education providers um, be made aware that in October they need to present their 2020. It's a little bit earlier than they're all used to, so we may not have everybody's, and in which case in December we present the rest. But the goal is always to publish the next year's options for instructors at the same time for all of them because sometimes they look at them that early. So we'll, we'll get that wrapped up as well. Um, before we finish, uh, we have a comment. Would you come up to the podium, please? Can you give your name and uh, tell us who you are? <laughs> Thank you so much. I didn't come prepared to speak at all today. I sat here as a school owner, and I've been a school owner for over 50 years. Uh, I'm real concerned about uh, the, the fact that there are schools that don't operate as my school does. I don't know what the answer is other than more inspections in those schools be really either shut down or inspected heavily. Or, and I know you're limited for time and probably money. But as an educator, I'm a retired school teacher. I taught 30 years, and I'm all about proper education. There's more to teaching than passing a test, as we all know. <clears throat> In this industry, we have to be aware of uh, the type of student we have now. Most of these students do need enough hours to get enough practice in their clinic to address people properly, uh, to learn how to use those chemicals properly, to really do what's right for that, that client. We focus on that. Not all schools maybe do that. I, you know, I'm in the little world. I'm in Clarksville. I have a large, large turnover of population, many people that come from every state in the United States. I love this industry. Now, uh, I don't think that, that this board should lower our standard because other states, I know that there are changes. I know the deregulation thing is going on. But when you're making your decisions, please realize we stand as a state. Our quality of education is up to you guys. <coughs> I'm not the only school owner here and I never <laughs> speak in public much. But I really feel strongly that this is not right. Now, the reciprocity thing I think is good. If they have worked continuously, I personally think it needs to be three years, but at least one year. Uh, yes, we want them to get a job, but we want them to get a job, keep a job, and keep the license going on. If they go and they get a job because they have one year experience, and then they're not able to do the job, they're going to go somewhere else. They're going not renew their license you know but as a school owner i just wish you would cons reconsider what you're thinking about lowering our st standards because of the other states and that's i appreciate you listening to me uh, i uh invite you to come to my school and see how we're doing it uh we we do clinic we teach those students how to uh talk to their client it, you know the people skills is so important if you've ever been in a shop where you didn't get that service they didn't address you correctly or didn't know how it's not that they don't want to these kids are really coming out of school not not, not having skills they do not have the people's skills somehow we failed them as a generation i've seen it for the last 10 years go downhill but we work hard on that and good schools will work hard on that it is part of our curriculum but I just want you to know it's not all schools. I know what you're, you're seeing the trend going the way it is, and you're seeing other states doing what they're doing. But I don't think we should lower our standards too much to meet that. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for coming in and speaking. We appreciate that. Um, well, at this point of our day, we usually get to that spot where we're seeking a, a motion before we do that real quick. One last note on my part. The gentleman who uh, was the owner of the barber school I attended uh, uh, and uh, taught me uh, the arts of uh, being a master barber passed away just a couple of weeks ago, Mr. Lee Dunn, and uh, I just wanted to mention him today and and uh, if his family's watching, just say, you know, I appreciate the things he did for me and I appreciate what he meant to our industry. And not just Lee, every year we lose folks who, are, who uh, have laid the foundation for what our industry is today. And uh, we really ought to remember where they are and uh, where we came from and where we're going. As she said, we don't want to lower our standards. We want to uh, continue to grow and prosper and, uh, and do well in the industry. So. Thank you to Mr. Dunn. I appreciate you. And uh, with that, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion? Oh. oh. <laughs> I was looking at Nina. Nina usually does it. Make a motion to adjourn. I second we'll, it. We'll keep her second. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carried. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Hey, Ron, my, my, my oh, mentor is probably 79 now. You're welcome, sweetie. So, hey, you, 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 you. yeah, old school, boy. They did it.